Fred, you were just sharing some great insights on how to avoid the blame game at work. You know how employees often will misinterpret uh, what their leaders are saying. Well, many managers are not really clear and focused when they give an assignment or a task or a project that needs to be done. They're kind of talking about it in general. And they think as a result of their talking about it, these employees now will all rally around it, go and do what I want to have them do. And so it's kind of presented in what I call a chit-chat way. There's nothing wrong with chit-chat. I mean, the world runs on chit-chat, you know, just casual talking. But in an organization, if you have a goal to accomplish, there's something you want to achieve, you as the director, manager, leader, need to, first of all, identify clearly what is it I want to accomplish, who is it that I want to help me accomplish this, and how do I present it in a way that they will take on this assignment and actually do it and give me back the response and the product that I want. And I call that intentional communication. So it's a planned communication. And it's a way we influence others to act and perform in a way that we most desire. And so as a leader or manager, if I have <clears throat> a project that I want individuals to work on, and I may have m multiple individuals working on it, I need to think what is the best way I can engage each of those individuals to go and take this task at hand. So I need to approach them around their personality style, use communication language that they understand clearly that is motivating for them that they're most apt to respond to. Can you give me some examples? Well, if I'm, so I've got this project, I want done. I need to go to my, give, convey a message to my logical subordinates and employees that <clears throat> here is the overall goal, here's what we need to accomplish. I would like their input on the goal and also I'd like their input on how we might best accomplish it because they are good idea people. And I would say, I need your ideas to make this happen. And so I'd like you to think about this and come back to me and give me ideas how we can make this the best possible end result. And so I'm going to them and stimulating them in, in their inner uh, motivations, which are their needs and values. When their needs and values are congruent with what I want, they're going to drive themselves. And I'll get a good product. I'll get a good end result. So I need to address them that way. <clears throat> that same message is not going to work with the other three. For my relationship people, I need to say, this is going to be so meaningful to help people in a way that we've not helped them before. And they're going to benefit, and you're going to benefit, and everyone will feel very good about this, and very positive. And they will really improve working and relationships and, and everything that is good that we like. And then I, I get them kind of excited, and they want to pull and do what they can to make it happen. For the organized people, <clears throat> I need to <clears throat> either give them specific detail what I want them to do, because they will follow and they will do it. They are obedient, they just, they want to please. Or, if I don't know the detail, what I really need, because they are the detailed people, I may ask them, here's our overall picture. How can we best accomplish it? Can you give me a plan that I can review and I can get back to you? Because they're the good planners. Personally, I'm not a good planner. I'm a lousy planner. <laughs> so let them do the plan. I can rubber stamp it, and they'll go and they'll do it, and they'll be happy. And for the action people, I need to say, hey, we've got a challenge. Nobody's done this. This is pretty high risk. It's kind of, you know, maybe not as safe as we have to. Maybe we're putting ourselves on an edge. I want you to see what we can maybe make happen. But what if it's not really dangerous <laughs> or risky? I mean, most things that we discuss in management with action-oriented people aren't, aren't dangerous. Well, um, they come up with the unique ways of doing it that they think has not been done before. So maybe I should take the danger out of it. But if I would come to them, Christine, and say, <clears throat> what is the way we can get this done fastest? They would jump to that. Right, What's the way we can cut out all the extremist stuff we don't want to do? How can we get to the bottom line as soon as possible? Perfect. <laughs> yeah. That resonates with my action side. Yeah. <laughs> So, and, and what about like the, the maverick side of the action-oriented person? Well, 
See, if it's never been done before, or if we say, hey, I think so-and-so company is working on it, can we get our product out before they do? They're driven. They just, oh yes, we can do it, we'll make it happen. Or we'll sell more of these than anybody else, or we'll increase, you know, how functioning this is over what the other company is doing. And, and so they love to compete because they need to win. Mm -hmm. They're driven to win, and so if there's any of these, hey, can we get ahead of so and so? It's like, <clears throat> you know, can you get rid, can you get ahead of Microsoft on one of these software programs? The go go go. And and do logical people like to compete as well? <clears throat> yes, they like to compete. However, uh, they're perfectionistic. They will not compete and cut corners. Whereas the action people may say, well, let's get out there and make it happen, then we can tweak it later. <laughs> we'll iron out the problem. And what about the organized people? Do they compete? Um, they have to be right. Uh, if they're competing for rightness, it's okay. So, can we develop a product here that is a better product than anybody else has? That will really accomplish what we're trying to say it will accomplish. And you've got them in your corner. Because they do not want to be wrong. And to put out something that is <coughs> wrong, they, they will sleep at night. Right. They want a good product to stand behind or good yes. service. <coughs> yes. Yes. They want to be proud of what they do. And relationship people, do they want to compete? It depends upon if they're action second. Mm -hmm. If they are, they'll compete. If they're organized second, they want it to be right. Because in work, other than related to people, they're going to work on their second way, the relationship people. Mm -hmm. They're different than all the other. All the other work out of the first way. Mm -hmm. But the relationship people, other than getting people together and relating, they have to work out of their second way. Mm -hmm. Unless they're leading or managing or supervising and engaging, those kind of things. Then they can work out of their primary way. So, to a manager, your final words of advice when giving directives? Identify what you want to accomplish and present it in four different ways so that it addresses the needs and values of each of your personality ways in your organization. Thank you.